You're following a long vehicle approaching a crossroads. What should you do if the driver signals right but moves close to the left-hand curb? A. Warn the driver about the wrong signal. B. Wait behind the long vehicle. C. Report the driver to the police. D. Overtake on the right-hand side. Correct answer. B. Wait behind the long vehicle. The long vehicle driver is most likely positioning for a wide right turn. The safest action is to wait behind the vehicle until the maneuver is completed. Which color follows the green signal at a puff in crossing? A. Steady red. B. Flashing amber. C. Steady amber. D. Flashing green. Correct answer. C. Steady amber. Puffin crossings have infrared sensors that detect when pedestrians are crossing and hold the red traffic signal until the crossing is clear. The use of a sensor means there's no flashing amber phase as there is with a pelican crossing. You're going to turn left from a main road into a minor road. What should you do as you approach the junction? A. Keep just left of the middle of the road. B. Keep in the middle of the road. C. Swing out to the right just before turning. D. Keep well to the left of the road. Correct answer. D. Keep well to the left of the road. When turning left, you should keep to the left of your lane to signal your intentions to other road users. What should you do when you leave your car unattended for a few minutes? A. Leave the engine running. B. Switch the engine off but leave the key in. C. Lock it and remove the key. D. Park near a traffic warden. Correct answer. C. Lock it and remove the key. For the security of your vehicle, you should always lock it and remove the key, even if you're only leaving it for a few minutes. When would you use the right-hand lane on a three-lane motorway? A when you're turning right. B. When you're overtaking. C. When you're traveling above the speed limit. D. When you're trying to save fuel. Correct answer. B. When you're overtaking. The right-hand lane on a three-lane motorway in the UK is generally used for overtaking. Once you have overtaken, you should return to the middle or left-hand lane. What should you do when cyclists are moving off from a junction? A. Honk your horn to signal them to move faster. B. Accelerate and overtake the cyclists as soon as possible. C. Stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists if necessary. D. Slow down and proceed with caution. Correct answer, C. You should stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists if necessary. This includes when cyclists are approaching, passing or moving off from a junction. Second, moving past or waiting alongside stationary or slow-moving traffic. And third, traveling around a roundabout. Driving when you are tired greatly increases your risk of collision. To minimize this risk, you should A. Avoid driving when natural alertness is at a minimum. B. Avoid undertaking long journeys between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. C. Take a minimum break of at least 15 minutes every two hours. D. Have a strong coffee and continue to drive. Correct answer. A. Avoid driving when natural alertness is at a minimum. Avoid undertaking long journeys between midnight and 6 a.m. when natural alertness is at a minimum. What is the minimum distance from which you must be able to read a vehicle number plate in good daylight, as per the UK law? A. 10 meters. B. 15 meters. C. 20 meters. D. 25 meters. Correct answer. C. 20 meters. You must be able to read a vehicle number plate in good daylight from a distance of 20 meters or 20.5 meters where the old style number plate is used. 
If you need to wear glasses or contact lenses, to do this, you must wear them at all times while driving. A relative offers the use of his or her car for private practice. Before driving it you must make sure that a. The vehicle has insurance cover. b. Your use of the car is insured. c. Your relative has third-party insurance. d. You have the insurance documents for the car. Correct answer b. Your use of the car is insured. While it's important for the vehicle to be insured in general, the most crucial aspect for you as a driver is that you're insured to drive the vehicle. In the UK, driving without insurance is illegal, so you must make sure that your use of the car is covered by an insurance policy. Before driving a car for the first time you must Choose two answers. A. Have applied for your photocard license. B. Make sure your eyesight is up to the required standard. C. Have received your provisional license. D. Pass the theory test. Correct answers, B and C. Before you can drive a car for the first time in the UK, you need to have received your provisional license, which gives you the legal right to drive on UK roads under certain conditions and make sure your eyesight is up to the required standard. You are using your own car for private practice. The L plates displayed on the car. Choose two answers. A. Can be made up to a size of your choice. B. Must be clearly visible to the front and from behind. C. Best placed in the front and rear windows. D. Must conform to legal specifications. Correct answers, B and D. If you're a learner driver using your own car for private practice, the L plates displayed on your vehicle must be clearly visible from the front and from behind. This helps other road users identify you as a learner driver and potentially adjust their driving to accommodate your learning status. Additionally, these L plates must conform to legal specifications, they must be read on a white background and of a certain size, usually a square shape where the sides are at least 17.5 cm long. How should you use anti-lock brakes when you need to stop in an emergency? A. Keep pumping the foot brake to prevent skidding. B. Brake normally but grip the steering wheel tightly. C. Brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped. D. Apply the parking brake to reduce the stopping distance. Correct answer. C. Brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped. Anti-lock braking systems, ABS, are designed to prevent skidding and maintain steering control when you brake hard. If you need to stop in an emergency, you should apply the foot brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped, and the ABS will automatically pump the brakes for you to prevent skidding. If you're approaching a lorry, the best answer from the given options is likely A. Slow down and be prepared to wait. B. Make the lorry wait for you. C. Flash your lights at the lorry. D. Move to the right-hand side of the road. Correct answer. A. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Lorries are larger and slower moving vehicles. As such, when you approach a lorry, it's often safest to slow down and be prepared to wait, especially if the lorry is turning or maneuvering. You're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing. What signal will show next? A. Red and amber. B. Green alone. C. Amber alone. D. Green and amber. Correct answer. A. Red and amber. In the UK, when the traffic light sequence is changing from red to green, the red light will remain illuminated and be joined by the amber light before the green light shows. So, the correct sequence would be red then red and amber together, then green. What should you do when you park at night on a road that has a 40 miles per hour speed limit? A. Park facing the traffic. B. Leave parking lights switched on. C. Leave dipped headlights switched on. D. Park near a street light. Correct answer. B. Leave parking lights switched on. 
In the UK, if you park at night on a road with a speed limit over 30 miles per hour, you should leave your parking or side lights switched on. This is to ensure that other drivers can see your parked vehicle clearly, reducing the risk of accidents. You're in a built-up area at night and the road is well lit. Why should you use dipped headlights? A. So that you can see further along the road. B. So that you can go at a much faster speed. C. So that you can switch to main beam quickly. D. So that you can be easily seen by others. Correct answer, D. So that you can be easily seen by others. Even in well-lit areas at night, it's important to use dipped headlights so other drivers and pedestrians can easily see your vehicle. It's not about seeing further along the road or going faster, it's about visibility and safety. The driver is legally responsible for the wearing of seat belts by A. All passengers, regardless of age. B. Children over 14 but under 16. C. All children under 14. D. Any adult with a disability. Correct answer, C. All children under 14. In the UK, drivers are legally responsible for ensuring that any passenger under the age of 14 is using the appropriate child restraint or an adult seat belt. For passengers aged 14 and over, they are personally responsible for wearing their seat belt. While drivers should always encourage all passengers to wear seat belts, the legal responsibility differs based on age. Why should you allow extra room while overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? A. The rider may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind. B. The rider may be blown in front of you. C. The rider may stop suddenly. D. The rider may be traveling faster than normal. Correct answer, B, the rider may be blown in front of you. Wind can significantly affect the control and stability of a motorcycle. A gust of wind can push a motorcyclist sideways unexpectedly, potentially into your path if you're overtaking. As such, you should always allow extra room while overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day. The most effective ways to counter sleepiness when driving are to Choose three answers. A. Avoid driving at night. B. Avoid driving for too long without a break. C. Keep fresh air circulating in the car. D. Take regular breaks. Correct answers B, C, and D. Driving for extended periods without a break can lead to fatigue and sleepiness. It's recommended to take a break of at least 15 minutes every two hours to help maintain concentration and alertness. Keeping fresh air circulating in the car can also help to keep you awake by preventing the environment from becoming stuffy and warm, which can contribute to sleepiness. Driving after drinking alcohol will Choose three answers. A. Reduce your sense of confidence. B. Make you more likely to take risks. C. Slow down your reactions. D. Affect your judgments. Correct answers B, C, and D. Alcohol impairs various aspects of your cognitive function, affecting your ability to drive safely. It can make you more likely to take risks due to decreased inhibition. It can slow down your reaction times, making it more difficult for you to respond quickly to situations on the road. It can also negatively impact your judgment, affecting your ability to make safe and sensible decisions while driving. You're driving on an open road in dry weather. What distance should you keep from the vehicle in front? A. A two-second time gap. B. One car length. C. Two meters, six feet, six inches. D. Two car lengths. Correct answer, A, a two-second time gap. The two-second rule is a rule of thumb by which a driver may maintain a safe trailing distance at any speed. The rule is that a driver should ideally stay at least two seconds behind any vehicle that is directly in front of his or her vehicle. 
this is to provide enough time to react and stop to prevent a collision in case the vehicle ahead stops suddenly. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that have red and amber showing together? A. Pass the lights if the road is clear. B. Take care because there's a fault with the lights. C. Wait for the green light. D. Stop because the lights are changing to red. Correct answer, C. Wait for the green light. In the UK traffic light sequence, red and amber appearing together means that the lights are about to change to green. However, you should still wait behind the stop line until the green light appears. At an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. How could you help them? A. Apply lotions to the injury. B. Burst any blisters. C. Remove anything sticking to the burns. D. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. Correct answer, D. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. The correct immediate treatment for burns is to cool the area with clean, cool, but not cold, water to help reduce pain, swelling, and the risk of scarring. The water should be cool rather than icy, as too cold water can lead to hypothermia if large areas are burned. Do not try to remove anything stuck to the burn, as this could cause more damage. You're driving towards this left-hand bend. What danger should you be anticipating? A. A vehicle overtaking you. B. Mud on the road. C. The road getting narrower. D. Pedestrians walking towards you. Correct answer, D. Pedestrians walking towards you. As a driver, being aware of this helps you anticipate and prepare for potential hazards, such as pedestrians in the roadway, especially around bends where visibility may be limited. This is why it's crucial to approach bends at a speed that allows you to stop safely within the distance you can see to be clear. What could you do to help injured people at an incident? A. Keep them warm and comfortable. B. Give them something to eat. C. Keep them on the move by walking them around. D. Give them a warm drink. Correct answer, A. Keep them warm and comfortable. After an accident, it's crucial to keep injured people warm and comfortable to prevent shock. Unless necessary for safety, you should not move them as it could potentially worsen their injuries. Giving them food or drink could be harmful, especially if they need surgery later. What's the main benefit of driving a four-wheel drive vehicle? A. Improved grip on the road. B. Lower fuel consumption. C. Shorter stopping distances. D. Improve passenger comfort. Correct answer. A. Improved grip on the road. The primary advantage of a four-wheel drive, 4WD, vehicle is enhanced traction. This is especially useful in off-road conditions or bad weather. For WD doesn't necessarily reduce fuel consumption, shorten stopping distances, or improve comfort compared to two-wheel drive vehicles. You've been involved in an argument that's made you feel angry. What should you do before starting your journey? A. Open a window. B. Turn on your radio. C. Have an alcoholic drink. D. Calm down. Correct answer, D. Calm down. If you've been involved in an incident that has upset or angered you, it's essential to calm down before you start driving. Emotional distress can significantly impair your ability to concentrate and make rational decisions, making driving potentially dangerous. Choose two answers. If carrying children in a vehicle the driver should ensure that they A. Enter by the door nearest their seat. B. Enter by the door nearest the curb. C. All wear an adult seat belt. D. Use a child restraint appropriate for their height and weight. Correct answers, B and D. 
It's safer for children to enter and exit the vehicle from the door nearest the curb to avoid the risk of oncoming traffic. As for safety measures during the ride, children should use a child restraint appropriate for their height and weight. You're approaching a roundabout. What should you do if a cyclist ahead is signaling to turn right? A. Overtake on the right. B. Give a warning with your horn. C. Signal the cyclist to move across. D. Give the cyclist plenty of room. Correct answer, D. Give the cyclist plenty of room. Cyclists, just like other road users, have the right to occupy the full lane when necessary for safety reasons, such as when turning at a roundabout. Therefore, you should give them plenty of room and only overtake when it is safe to do so. Why is it dangerous to travel too close to the vehicle ahead? A. Your engine will overheat. B. Your mirrors will need adjusting. C. Your view of the road ahead will be restricted. D. Your sat-nav will be confused. Correct answer, C. Your view of the road ahead will be restricted. Traveling too close to the vehicle ahead, known as tailgating, is dangerous because it restricts your view of the road ahead. This means you have less time to react to changes in traffic or road conditions. Who has responsibility for seeing that a vehicle isn't overloaded? A. The owner of the vehicle. B. The driver of the vehicle. C. The person who loaded the vehicle. D. The registered keeper of the vehicle. Correct answer, B. The driver of the vehicle. The driver of the vehicle is responsible for ensuring that the vehicle is not overloaded. Overloading a vehicle can adversely affect its handling and braking, increase fuel consumption, and lead to tire failure, making it a serious safety issue. You have arranged a practice session with your supervisor but find yourself very tired after a hard day at work. You should A. Take some pep pills to stay awake. B. Not drive. C. Drive faster to lessen the danger of falling asleep at the wheel. D. Take a flask of hot coffee with you. Correct answer, B. Not drive. If you are very tired, you should not drive. Fatigue significantly impairs driving performance by slowing reaction times and decreasing situational awareness. No amount of caffeine or other stimulants can overcome the effects of severe fatigue. Choose two answers. Head restraints provide protection against A. Neck and spinal injuries. B. The effects of whiplash. C. Severe headaches. D. Fatigue on long journeys. Correct answers A and B. While head restraints are primarily designed to protect against the effects of whiplash, they can also provide protection against other neck and spinal injuries. By limiting the rearward movement of the head in a rear impact collision, they reduce the risk of injuries to the cervical vertebrae. Therefore, both A and B are correct. How should you dispose of a used vehicle battery? A. Bury it in your garden. B. Put it in the dustbin. C. Take it to a local authority disposal site. D. Leave it on wasteland. Correct answer. C. Take it to a local authority disposal site. Vehicle batteries contain harmful chemicals that can be hazardous to the environment if not disposed of properly. Therefore, they should not be disposed of in the general household waste. What should you do if the vehicle starts reversing off the driveway? A. Move to the opposite side of the road. B. Drive through as you have priority. C. Sound your horn and be prepared to stop. D. Speed up and drive through quickly. Correct answer. C. Sound your horn and be prepared to stop. If a vehicle starts reversing off a driveway, you should be prepared to stop. Sound your horn to alert the other driver of your presence. 
It's crucial to remain vigilant and considerate in residential areas where vehicles might be pulling out unexpectedly. What should you do when you're passing loose sheep on the road? A. Briefly sound your horn. B. Go very slowly. C. Pass quickly but quietly. D. Herd them to the side of the road. Correct answer. B. Go very slowly. When encountering livestock or loose animals on the road, the safest thing to do is to slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary. Sounding your horn or driving quickly could startle the animals and cause an unpredictable reaction. Herding the animals yourself could also be dangerous. What does this sign mean? A. Hump bridge. B. Humps in the road. C. Entrance to tunnel. D. Soft verges. Correct answer. B. Humps in the road. The sign indicating humps in the road is used to alert drivers that there are road humps ahead. These are traffic calming measures that encourage drivers to slow down. It's important to approach these humps at a reduced speed to maintain control of your vehicle. You should check your seat position. Choose two answers. A. As soon as you drive away. B. If someone else has been driving. C. Before you switch on the engine. D. When you have been driving for about five minutes. Correct answers, B and C. It's important to ensure that your seat is correctly adjusted before you start driving to ensure you have full control over the vehicle and a clear view of your surroundings. You should particularly check if someone else has been driving the vehicle, as they may have adjusted the seat to their preferences. Choose two answers. When driving, you should A. Never take a hand off the wheel. B. Never take both hands off the wheel if the car is moving. C. Look where you want the car to go. D. Let the wheel spin back after turning. Correct answers, B and C. Keeping both hands on the wheel while the car is moving is a crucial safety measure, ensuring you can respond to any unexpected situations. Looking where you want the car to go helps you safely navigate the roads. Letting the wheel spin back after turning isn't recommended, as it may lead to loss of control. You wish to turn right ahead. Why should you take up the correct position in good time? A. To allow other drivers to pull out in front of you. B. To give a better view into the road that you're joining. C. To help other road users know what you intend to do. D. To allow drivers to pass you on the right. Correct answer. C. To help other road users know what you intend to do. Taking up the correct position early helps signal your intentions to other road users. This can make it safer as it gives other drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians time to react to your planned movements. You're looking for somewhere to park your vehicle. Neither you nor your passenger are disabled. What should you do if the only free spaces are marked for disabled drivers? A. Use one of these spaces. B. Park in one of these spaces but stay with your vehicle. C. Use one of the spaces as long as one is kept free. D. Wait for a regular parking space to become free. Correct answer, D. Wait for a regular parking space to become free. Parking spaces marked for disabled drivers are reserved for people with disabilities who hold a blue badge. These spaces are typically located close to entrances or exits and are wider than regular spaces to accommodate wheelchairs or other mobility aids. What does this curved arrow road marking mean? A. Heavy vehicles should take the next road on the left to avoid a weight limit. B. The road ahead bends to the left. C. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. D. The road ahead has a camber to the left. Correct answer is C. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. This sign often means that the overtaking lane is ending, 
and vehicles that have overtaken should move back to the left. It's crucial for drivers to understand and follow these road markings to ensure smooth traffic flow and safety for all road users. What color are the reflective studs between a motorway and a slip road? A. Amber B. White C. Green D. Red Correct answer, C. Green. The reflective studs, also known as cat's eyes, between a motorway and its slip road are green. These studs serve to demarcate the motorway boundaries, exits, and slip roads, aiding drivers especially in poor visibility conditions. Which sign means no stopping? Sign A. Sign B. Sign C. Sign D. Correct answer, C. The no stopping sign is a red cross over a blue background, often termed as a clearway sign. It prohibits drivers from stopping their vehicle under any circumstance, even to set down or pick up passengers. It is put in place to ensure smooth traffic flow, especially in busy areas or highways. What is the shape of a traffic sign giving orders? Sign A. Sign B. Sign C and Sign D. Correct answer, D. Traffic signs giving orders are generally circular in shape. Signs with a red ring are mostly prohibitive, indicating something that is not allowed. Which instrument panel warning light would show that headlights are on main beam? Sign A. Sign B. Sign C. Sign D. Answer, C. The instrument panel warning light that shows headlights are on main beam is usually a blue icon depicting a headlamp with several beams, or a headlamp with the letter H inside it. You wish to tow a trailer. Where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? A. In the vehicle handbook. B. In the highway code. C. In your vehicle registration certificate. D. In your license documents. Correct answer, A. In the vehicle handbook. The maximum nose weight, also known as the maximum permissible hitch weight, for your vehicle's tow hitch is usually provided in the vehicle's handbook manual. This information is specific to each vehicle model, and exceeding the specified limit could affect the handling of the vehicle, making it unsafe to drive. What part of the car does the law require you to keep in good condition? A. The gearbox. B. The transmission. C. The door locks. D. The seat belts. Correct answer. D. The seat belts. The law requires that all seat belts in a vehicle must be maintained in good condition. They are critical safety features that can protect you and your passengers in the event of an accident. You've just passed your first practical driving test. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your license in the next two years? A. Retake only your theory test. B. Retake your theory and practical tests. C. Retake only your practical test. D. Reapply for your full license immediately. Correct answer. B. Retake your theory and practical tests. According to the driving law, new drivers who accumulate six or more penalty points within two years of passing their first driving test will have their licenses revoked. To get their license back, they will have to retake both the theory and practical tests. What should you do when you move off from behind a parked car? A. Give a signal after moving off. B. Look around before moving off. C. Look around after moving off. D. Use the exterior mirrors only. Correct answer. B. Look around before moving off. When moving off from behind a parked car, it is important to look around before moving off to ensure the way is clear and to alert other road users and pedestrians of your intentions. You should check your mirrors and blind spots and signal as necessary before you start moving. 
You're driving on a motorway. You feel tired and decide to stop at the next service station. What should you do if it's further than you thought? A. Stop on the hard shoulder for a rest. B. Keep going until you get there. C. Leave the motorway at the next exit. D. Speed up to reach the services sooner. Correct answer. C. Leave the motorway at the next exit. Fatigue can greatly impair your driving abilities, and it's essential to address it as soon as you feel tired. If the next service station is too far, exit the motorway at the next available exit and find a safe place to rest before continuing your journey. At a junction with a stop sign, when should you finally decide it's safe to proceed? A. After looking both ways. B. Once you're sure the traffic lights have turned red. C. Only after slowing down to 5 miles per hour. D. When there is no traffic on the main road. Correct answer. A. After looking both ways. A stop sign at a junction indicates that you must come to a complete stop. You should only proceed when you've looked both ways and are sure it's safe, taking into consideration pedestrians, cyclists, and other road users. Traffic light color or the speed of your vehicle is not the determinant for a safe proceed, your awareness of the environment is. What should you do if a horse rider signals that they're about to turn right? A. Overtake on the left. B. Drive slowly past them. C. Flash your headlights to let them know you're there. D. Wait behind them. Correct answer. D. Wait behind them. If a horse rider signals that they're about to turn right, it's important to slow down and wait behind them. Horses can be easily spooked by sudden movements or loud noises, and overtaking or flashing your headlights could startle the horse and cause an accident.